Well, about 15 months ago, we recorded a, a video, proved to be very, very popular, and it was looking at the Irish energy crisis. Now, um, 15 months on, we're going to revisit that very subject. So here's Ireland located to the west of the United Kingdom in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what makes Ireland quite interesting is that here's the network of pipelines that uh, stretches across. Now, obviously, some of these pipelines are not uh, as active today uh, as they were pre-invasion of Ukraine, but some of them very active indeed. But you can see this network that comes right across. It comes here through the UK, from Norway, from the uh, continental Europe, right across the UK. And then you can see that there are some lines that go right across to Ireland, but Ireland's right at the end of the line. Now, the video uh, we did, it's had over 4,600 views and very, very popular. That gives you a kind of a background of uh, what was happening with all the historic production of oil and gas and some of the plans going forward for the transition to net zero. Now, a lot of the material I'm using today was, was based on a really superb article that uh, was put out there by uh, Peter Ryan. And there's the link to Peter's uh, excellent article. Now, this is the worldwide greenhouse gas emission, and you can see it's just been going up here from the 1850s to uh, 2021, the uh, most recent data point on here. And uh, it's projected that, uh, well, we've got to reduce that. And if we were to actually project, this is how we could get it down towards zero by 2050. Now, if we actually look at that, this is kind of how we would have to achieve that. Now, if we were to do that, we'd all have to stop driving, stay at home, switch off the heating, grow our own fruit and veg, wear our loincloths. It would be a drastic reduction, go back to living in caves. But yes, it's not going to be that there won't be any gas emissions. It's just that we have to offset those gas emissions by actually capturing carbon dioxide, sequestering it, if we're going to get to a net zero situation. Now, this is a map of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and you can see some of the, the bigger offenders highlighted here. You know, in the uh, USA and China, stand out in this, these darker colors, over 5 billion tons per year. And then you can see the varying shades. Now, looking at Ireland, it's a lot bigger than you think. This is the continental shelf, or indeed the, the international uh, border. Uh, you can see it runs down here in, on the uh, Irish Sea, Cardigan Bay, and out into the Celtic Sea. And then it goes right the way out here. Now, I'm not entirely sure what these two little uh, inserts are on that, but uh, maybe somebody can put a comment in the notes below. And then it stretches all the way out here across the Rockall Plateau, over into the Murray Channel. So uh, a huge area, and you can see some of the basins that really... Uh, have not yet been exploited or even explored to any great extent. In total, there are only 160 wells drilled offshore Ireland. Now, the UK has drilled over 4,000. The US, many millions of wells. Now, for the US, this doesn't actually mean offshore wells. There's so many uh, millions that are onshore, but uh, there's certainly tens, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands uh, offshore in the Gulf of Mexico and, uh, of course, offshore Alaska as well. Now, if we look at the geological basins of Ireland shown here on this map, we can see that every basin, well, bar a few that perhaps haven't been explored at all, they've all got uh, proven petroleum systems. Now, the number of producing fields, it currently stands at one. Located here, it's the Corrib field. Now, Number of fields ready for development, that currently stands at zero. Number of exploration wells likely to be drilled in the next year, none. Chances of turning this around in the next decade, well, in my opinion, it is extremely small. The Irish regulator encouraged the industry to come in and acquire acreage and shoot seismic, which was duly done over the last decade or so. But then the change of policy drove everybody away. Most of the acreage has been relinquished. There's probably more relinquishments uh, in the pipeline. And uh, trying to encourage companies to come back into the country, well, that's going to that's going to require some serious long-term commitments and uh, it can't be subject to future change. It's got to be cast iron. Can you see that happening? 
So there are many discoveries in and around Ireland. Some of these went on to be developed, but you can see in green are the oil discoveries and in red there are the uh, the gas discoveries. And a few of these have been developed, certainly in the uh, the Celtic Sea region. There has been past production. And see our first video for more information on that. Nothing's ever been developed here in the Porcupine Basin. And to date, we only have the Corrib Field uh, that's actually been developed in the Northwest Ireland Offshore Basin. So what are the updates since our uh, our last video? Well, we spent a lot of time looking at the, uh, the Barry Row um, oil field opportunity uh, down in the Celtic Sea. And, well, it's now been relinquished. So all those efforts over years, over decades, all come to naught. So who wins? Well, it's not the Irish Exchequer, it's not Irish citizens, and it's not any of the companies or shareholders who've been involved in this over the years. And really, when you consider that the footprint of imported hydrocarbons, uh, oil and gas, is actually going to be higher than any indigenous resources that are developed, then it's not good for the environment either. Now, I hear that there could be some developments. Watch this space and we'll report back if there's any news before too long in this region. Now, in this slide, we take a step back and, and just look at uh, the global uh, rise of deep water production. Now, there's a lot of deep water in Ireland and it is not getting explored. You can see, if you look around here, that the depths of the water here, beyond 2,200 metres water depth, that's uh, over nearly six, 7,000 feet. And you can see how production has grown. It's over 10 million barrels of oil equivalent a day, just to date. Now, could Ireland be a part of this picture? Well, we may never know. Now, if things could be different, what would success look like? Well, there would be lots of jobs created. It would stimulate foreign direct investment. It would increase spending in the Irish economy, increase tax revenues for the government, provide ample energy for all the uh, Ireland's uh, domestic and industrial sector. It would increase Ireland's national security, reduce dependency on foreign countries. At the end of the day, Ireland is at the end of the line for European gas. So it looks like the only thing is imports. Well, there were another couple of uh, energy projects that, that caught our eye, and uh, let's look at the first of those. So, the Shannon Estuary project. Now, this is uh, an LNG project. It was going to cost somewhere in the region of 650 million euros to actually build a, an LNG, a regasification terminal. Now, it was going to be in the estuary of the River Shannon, and it was basically a, a a company called Shannon LNG, which was a subsidiary of the US New Fortress Energy. Now, it was recently refused planning permission to go ahead with this. The plan, which included two gas-fired power stations and a battery energy storage facility, they've basically put on hold. Now, the reason given is contrary to current government policy, which is under review and uh, looking at both the gas and electricity needs of Ireland in the coming years and decades. Pause the video if you want to have a look at the words from the leading politicians here, the, the Minister for Environment, Eamon Ryan. But at the end of the day, he's saying that this review, it will be strategic and not commercial. Well, commercial kind of means economic to me, and strategic hmm, sort of sounds expensive. Another piece of breaking news is on the, uh, the Kestrel project. This is a new energy project project which is proposed down for the south of Ireland. This is uh, offshore Cork and it's three companies here, Decarbon X Limited, ESB and BGE which is a subsidiary of Centrica. Now they're proposing to redevelop the Kinsale head gas field for storage of green hydrogen and this is some of the material that I've grabbed from the website here. And we can see, pause the video to read this. The, there's plans to develop uh, Kinsale Head. It's the southwest Kinsale, which has previously been used as a gas storage facility and kind of integrate an offshore wind development, producing electricity, green hydrogen from electrolysis. And then eventually that's going to go and support the onshore project. Now, lots and lots of moving parts in this, and it's a very ambitious project, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. And it's a subject that we will revisit in our future updates. 
Now, more information on the Kestrel project, and, and pause the video to read this, but the only producing asset for hydrocarbons for gas is Corrib, and much of the gas that Ireland needs is actually imported uh, via Scotland, and uh, it's, again, right at the end of the line. Now, natural gas um, from Corrib, well, it's predicted that it will cease by 2030 and possibly before then. Now, um, some of the proposals here, it's kind of unclear when you read this, you know, are we actually talking about hydrogen? Are we actually talking about natural gas storage? Well, it is a bit confusing, but I think at the end of the day, it is talking about uh, green hydrogen. Now, some of the uh, issues, it will need a, a very large wind farm. So bear in mind that, you know, the electricity could go straight into the electric grid and, and actually be used that way. But, you know, to actually have the electrolysis um, and store it, that would actually defer payment for producing energy. Now, it probably needs either offshore or would it be onshore electrolysis and almost certainly would involve some kind of new platform structure uh, at Southwest Kinsale, unless uh, it was just all piped offshore again. Needs to uh, drill wells on the Southwest Kinsale field and um, they would have to be a combined hydrogen injector and producers. So it will initially mix uh, clean hydrogen with, with natural gas, you know, to actually make a, a sort of a cushion. So you're actually taking very clean hydrogen, putting it into the ground, and it's kind of going to get mixed with, uh, with some of the residual uh, methane and perhaps uh, heavier hydrocarbons. And then when it comes back out again, it will need to be uh, perhaps processed to make it clean and, and pure again. It'll need to uh, convert all of the existing uh, infrastructure of which we think there's very little left offshore other than pipelines which may or may not be suitable for reuse to repurpose for, for hydrogen. But if the plan includes uh, putting hydrogen into the grid, well, there's lots of technical issues with that. And uh, the existing gas grid was built and designed for methane and you know, different uh, calorific values for when it burns. There's, there's a whole bunch of issues. So whatever it's going to be, Kestrel's, it's not going to happen in a hurry. It's a complex project. And, you know, you've got to kind of look very long and hard to see if it will be actually economic and can be funded to make a, uh, a return for the investors. Or is it a case that the, uh, the government is going to subsidize uh, such a project or at the end of the day for government read the taxpayer? So where are we up to? Well, the looming energy crisis. We talked about it 15 months ago, and it's only getting closer. Collaboration with the UK and secure long-term watertight gas contracts. Well, that's a, a nice thing, but as we've done in a previous video recently, the UK's got some issues with uh, reserves that are dwindling and production levels that are falling away. Wind is imminent and floating wind, well, that is going to be, uh, there's got a lot of technical challenges and a lot of supply chain issues. Don't expect energy bills to come down anytime soon. Remember, it's not governments who pay, it's consumers and taxpayers. They foot the bill. We'll watch closely and we'll be happy to report good news and fixes as and when they come, but uh, at the minute, can't see too much on the horizon. Short-term political ideals reign supreme, so there will be a general election before too long, so uh, make sure that the party you're voting to has a solution and a way forward. So there you have it. That's our assessment. Ireland still not moved on an awful long way. Quite a number of uh, projects that might have happened, well, they've seemed to have fallen by the wayside, and we have got some new uh, new projects being considered, but are they going to be? Uh, are they going to come in in the next few years? Almost certainly not. And in the meantime, the Corrib gas field, its production keeps on declining. Hey ho, we'll revisit it. Um, we'll have a look at uh, the the Irish uh, energy crisis uh, going forward. In the meantime, please put some comments below. Look forward to seeing you back on our channel. Bye for now. Well, it was nearly, f and what's happened for these com?